Good afternoon. While the cylinder is away, I thought we would um, at the very least check out the head to see if the valve guides are in okay condition and replace the valve stem seals since I have them in the kit of parts that um, I've got for sealing the engine and I thought it might be interesting to show you. So, excuse me, I'm not going to be taking out the um, rocker arms because they run on a pivot that's it's not pressed into the head but it requires a, a Yamaha tool to pull it out or a slide hammer and none of my slide hammers are quite right and nothing I've managed to fabric hobble together has been able to solve that problem so I'm going to know when I'm defeated and leave them well alone they've got no play in them um, and I'm just going to see if we can take these out despite them which it looks like we should be able to so this is the dirt cheapest valve spring remover that you can buy on I think eBay in this case I've got a nice spring loaded one but as always with the tools I want to use it's actually at my parents house in their shed and they're in the process of moving house so finding it is a task unto itself I've got this on here um, and all that you do is I've got the cage that sort of suits the top size of the valve gives me the most room to work I'll see if I can spin that around a little bit so you can see better what's going on inside and I'll tip you because just over the back here the stop is centered on the valve in the little dimple we're not going to turn the stop end because we don't want to scratch up the valve we're just going to hold this steady which I'm doing with my left hand off camera and just wind this in and it's going to kind of suddenly jump when the collets decide that they don't want to be stuck in the um, spring plate anymore and I think you can just about see this might be the best view I'm going to be able to give you of it Let's see if we can go in a bit you can just about see those two little pieces of metal that are popping apart here and those are the valve collets or I don't know whether they're two or whether they make up one collet but if I wave the magnet in there you can see I've pulled one out and they've got little ridges on the inside that engage with the cuts in the end of the valve and they are cone shaped and they go in this way and as they're pressed up from underneath that draws them together clamps them around the rings in the end of the valve and keeps everything in one place so it looks like we'll need to do a tiny bit more compressing to get the other one out it's usually the way hopefully you can still see but it looks like everything's well clear of it now so let's give it a tiny bit of persuasion with a universal jab in tool okay looks like it wants to spin around so that means we haven't quite let it go yet a couple more turns you can see we're going a bit off center now which is not ideal Come on, call it. There we go. My magnet wants to pick up every other tool on the bench. And there we go, there's the other one. Make sure to keep these together as a pair. This is the exhaust valve. I've already done the inlet just to make sure the process works before I showed you and so I'm just gonna gently unwind this now and uh, in the box of the impact driver to my right I've got the two sides valves laid out together so that we know which parts came from which Okay, I think all the tension's gone off of this now. Be careful with valve springs, they're fairly meaty. Um, if you say I think all the tension's gone off and it's not, you can end up with one and its component parts flying across the room. So we're going to gently extract this. So there's two springs here. We want to take a good look at them. We can see on the bigger spring, the closer coils are on the bottom and they are as well on the smaller spring 
We want to keep all of this together. There's the, I um, don't know what the name for that is, the top, the hat. Um, and then we can see in here, we've got the valve, which is this sticky up bit here. The valve stem seal, which is this little bit with the green rubber on it. The camera's focusing on the wrong thing. And there is actually a plate at the bottom here. But first of all, we'll poke the valve and pull that out. There we go, there's the exhaust valve. Nice and covered in carbon and schmutz. Now that we've done that, we can safely put this this way round. That's the valve stem seal. Um, there are tools to drive these on. As for getting them off, I usually go with the um, just mutilate it approach, which if we uh, get the rocker out of the way, usually involves some amount of... Um, well, this I'm just pulling up as I'm wiggling this is quite a bit more awkward when there's a camera between you and it but um, just go easy don't rest or lever on anything that's the machine surface of the engine. Do not stick the pliers inside the valve guide because, oh well, don't stick them inside the seal because there's the valve guide you can now see. There's the valve stem seal. And then finally, we can use our magnet. if we can maneuver the uh, the base plate I guess there we go like all things in this realm of um, like engine work engineering mechanical stuff it's all about being at the exact right angle um, rather than pure force so just wiggle stuff about till it comes out you can now see the valve guide i'm not going to be replacing these i don't think the intake one seemed okay but i'll show you a quick check you can do to make sure again with all this stuff this is the kind of backyard shed way of doing it as you can hear by the crap falling everywhere i'm not an engineer I'm not an engine builder, I'm just a bloke in his shed trying to get a rubbish motorbike he bought off eBay to run properly. So, I've got the exhaust valve and I've stuck it back in its hole, as you can see. And now I'm just going to put my finger over the end of the valve guide and pull this out sharply. You hear that noise? That's an early indication that that valve guide is okay. The other thing to do is to put the valve in about this far, so it's about, I don't know, centimeter, two centimeters maximum off of being closed, and just give it a side to side wobble. And <laughs> it shouldn't move very much whatsoever. This one is probably a little bit worn, but I'd wager you can't see how much it's moving on camera. It's, it's okay for what it is. Um, if it makes an audible noise or if it moves, you know, with a, a click click or it's sort of visible from the distance that I am, it's quite a hard thing to convey. You can, of course, measure all of this with the right tools. Um, but if it doesn't feel particularly happy, then you're going to need your uh, valve guides replaced. I think in the case of this engine, I'm fairly happy with them um, with where it is we're going to clean up and lap these valves when we put them back in um but yeah that's that's all of that apart do bear in mind um that you're probably going to want to clean all of this out with brake parts cleaner when you're done because as you may have seen there's some sort of carbon and crap getting all over my hands but there's also little bits of fragments of metal from when i removed the valve stem seals so yeah I guess let's go about putting this back together. 
Okay, refitting is the reverse of removal. Do not forget to put the plate in before you put the valve stem seal on. Otherwise you'll be cursing yourself and buying a new set of valve stem seals. Um, my valve stem seals actually came with the gasket kit that I bought for the engine, which is here. Um, although I say they came with it, I got a set in the kit and I also bought two because I didn't think that the kit would come with them. So I've now got four valve stem seals. So I guess that's nice. But yeah, if you're buying the, um, let's see, any genuine parts gasket set for this bike or maybe any that's kind of like it um, have a good look at the picture I did but the gasket set pictured on um, I think it was might have been Wiimoto it wasn't the actual gasket set that I've got in my hands here so slightly different and thus didn't show these in it but have a good look at what you're buying at least and then um, make sure you don't end up with two like I did not that it really matters about a fiver this is what a nice new valve stem seal looks like and I'm gonna do something controversial here I've got um, some Lucas assembly lube and I'm just gonna pop a tiny drop on here and then um, spin it round. It just means that I don't tear it up as I'm trying to put it on. See if I can get an angle that works for me and you. Okay, so this is lubricated up and be really careful using pliers around these because they're incredibly thin metal on the outside and your pliers will crush them if you are not careful. <laughs> In the case of these valve stem seals, they are so small that you can get them on most of the way just with your fingers. There is a tool, you can probably see here, there's a shoulder on this, there's a tool that sits onto that shoulder and drives them down home and square and um, make sure that they seat perfectly straight. The socket goes over, it sits on the shoulder, it does not touch the green bit or the spring. Just pop it on. And that's the valve stem seal home. I'm just going to nip off camera now and clean up this valve because it's got a bit of carbon on it and then we'll carry on from there. Okay, same valve just but on the soft wheel, on the wire wheel. And is now free of carbon. Now I should check that these are straight, um, but I don't have the little jig here to, um, to put them on and the micrometer I think the uh, needle dial gauge is not uh, here either so we'll trust that these are straight this is after all a um, shedtastic rebuild and we'll uh, do the other one and then we'll give them a lap okay time to lap the valves back in um, this is something I suppose you only have to do if you've changed the guides because well in that case you'd probably want to resurface the valves or reface them but this is a good way to make sure while you are in here that you are getting as good a seal as you can out of your valves and it involves the um, <laughs> joke item of, of every garage everywhere the uh, oily stick this one's not oily yet because it's new um, but essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to put some paste Holtz call it fine grade and and uh, coarse grade. It's commonly known as carborundum paste um, and goes nicely with a Latin phrase illegitimi non carborundum which is butchered Latin but um, roughly stands for don't let the bastards grind you down. In this case um, the bastard is going to do some grinding. Bit of a word of caution 
we don't want any of this paste to get down into the valve guide. Um, you're seeing this out of sequence, so I don't have anything in there, valve guides, um, stem seals or anything like that, but just, just don't. Um, so this paste, and we're going to start with coarse, is essentially a paste full of little bits of sparkly metal. And we're just going to put a fine amount, he says, put in the whole lot, around the edge of the valve first thing, and then we are going to carefully completely miss drop this in and using our stick the small side of which appears to be perfect for this we're going to sucker onto the valve if we can And we're going to lift up slightly to take the pressure off. We're just going to start doing this. Pretty soon you'll be able to put the pressure back down. And that's when you can do this But Which just like you are trying to start a fire the allegedly native Indian way. You're just going to with a light pressure down do this and every few stops sort of lift and twist. Now you're going to hear the sound changing as you do this. It's going to go from to sss. It's probably the best way that I can describe it. Okay, I think I'm going to have to chuck the camera out of the way and do this one. I'll bring you back for the intake. Um, but the process is to do this until the sound evens out as a hiss. And then we're going to clean it all off. We're going to put the fine paste on. And we're going to do it until the sound evens out to a hiss. Once you're done... Um, you've put the valves back in, put the springs and everything back on, put the head nice and level like this, pour some petrol into it. And the name of the game is that the petrol stays in it, usually overnight is a good test. If it doesn't leak past the valves then you've got them sealing well. Fair warning, you've got to make sure you clean all of this paste out because it is abrasive and you don't want it floating around inside your engine, abrading all the things you don't want abraded. Right, I'll be back in a minute. Just dropping in quickly to say um, kind of the point of lapping valves is to check that they're making a good seal to make sure that the seats between the head and the valve are good. You can do that by looking and making sure that there's a dull grey colour after you've lapped all around the valve seat and all around the valve uh, in a nice consistent line. While it does help with the seal um, and it is kind of the final step, it can't correct any major issues with your engine or leaky valves unless they're because of carbon deposits that happen to be in that area. But really it's a diagnostic technique with the added benefit that it does help with the final seal so back to the video okay same song and dance on this side of the engine which is the inlet side so the valve is out pop the bottom piece on Grab ourselves a stem seal. No matter what way you're driving these on, I'd recommend doing this first part by hand. You probably can't see anything. Again, warning comes that these are very delicate because they're only made of really thin metal so don't go ham on them you can easily bend them by hand you can now there's a can't find the hole joke in here somewhere you can now pop the valve back in again and as for all the spring of my thing side, well, this is just reverse of removal with the slight juggling act that you've uh, got to get all of this compressed.
and together. Like so. And then get the collets in. Without it all flying all over the workshop. So, most importantly, with the collets. They go in with the wide side at the top, and in this valve's case that means these lines that set into the valve are on the bottom. I'm going to get a bit of incredibly sticky assembly lube and just dab it into the collet. My hope is, having done that, the collet will stick to the shank of the valve, I think is the correct term, once we get it in. RIP my patience trying to do this on its side. It goes without saying, you should do this with the cylinder head facing up so that when the collets fall, they fall into place. Not off into the cylinder, but for the purposes of showmanship and showing you in a nicely lit situation, that is now back together.